from the Morrowind Prophecies Becoming a vampire in Morrowind is pretty simple. Fight vampires, get bitten by one, and avoid getting killed in the process. This means you should either have a character powerful enough to take down a vampire, say level 10, or accomplish the running away, or both. You have a choice of vampire clans, but you may not realize this initially. Heck, you may not even realize for a while that Morrowind has vampires. They exist on the game's fringe, and you are required to face only one in the main quest. His name is Calvario, he is in the Nerano Ancestral Tomb, and he is a Burney vampire. Burney is one of the three competing vampire clans or bloodlines. It will take a little exploration to find the others. Most of Morrowind's vampires can be found in 12 layers, each affiliated with one of the clans. In addition, five vampires are independent contractors, linked to a specific clan by blood but operating on their own. The Burney clan, led by Rexel Burney, is based at the Galam Deus Observatory in the northern central part of the Molaga Moor mountain range. In addition, Burney vampires can be found in the Raviro Ancestor Tomb, west of Molag Moor, the Threlas Ancestor Tomb near Balor Salvos Farm outside Vivek, and the Andrethi Ancestral Tomb, southeast of Halmaren. In addition, four of the five rogue vampires are Burney. That goes for Marara in the Drethan Ancestral Tomb, Murta in the Relith Ancestral Tomb, Irarek in the Ginyth Ancestral Tomb, and Calvario in the Nirano Ancestral Tomb. Marara's base is on an island south of the Dwemer Ruin, in Kardar. Murtas is southeast of Kul. Irarex is just off the Gnissus Ald Vilothi Road and southeast of the Dwemer Ruin Arkthunch Sturdums. Calvario's tomb is southwest of the Ahimusa Ashlande camp. The Onde clan, led by Danoyen Onde, is the opposite of the Burney. It's about as far away as it can be from the populous west. Based at the tomb Eshmelech, on an island southwest of Shegored, the Onde vampires have additional layers in the Serethi ancestral tomb, northeast of Dagon Fell, the Dula ancestral tomb, west of Galam Deus, and the Aralan ancestral tomb, south of the Zainab Eshlande camp. Finally, the Kuara clan, led by Volrina Kuara, is based at the Dwemer ruin Druskasti, southwest of the Urshilako Eshlande camp. You also find Kuara vampires in the Cyrano ancestral tomb near Gelum Deus, the Hleran ancestral tomb west of Aldrun, and the Elan ancestral tomb southeast of Kul. The rogue Mastritus at the Salvel ancestral tomb is also a Kuara vampire. He is inside the ghost fence, on the Fayada, northeast of the Red Mountain Citadel Odrosal. Once bitten by a vampire, wait for three full days, and then go to sleep. A little tip, do this after you use the mode of fast travel to get as close as possible to the clan's headquarters. You won't be able to use fast travel afterward. When you wake up, you'll be a vampire in the bloodline of the vampire that bit you. If you've been infected, but are having second thoughts about becoming a vampire, or somehow wound up in the bloodline other than the one you wanted, don't worry. It can be cured with a simple cure common disease potion at any time before three days are up. Curing vampirism itself, regardless of what you hear in Morrowind, it can be done, but not with a potion. It will be your last act as a vampire. Once cured, you can't become one again, so we'll handle it last. Now, why would you want to be a vampire? Reason 1. To do the vampire quests. A vampire can perform up to 11 of the 17 vampire quests in a given game. Three of these are specific to the vampire clan you've joined. Joining a bloodline, which occurs automatically when you become a vampire, locks out the six quests for the two other bloodlines. The other eight quests are open to any vampire. Reason 2. To play as an incredibly powerful character. Being a vampire is not like belonging to a faction. It is a state of being. In fact, it is a state of super being. All vampires receive 20 point boosts in the stats strength, willpower, and speed, and 30 point boosts in the skills sneak, athletics, acrobatics, hand to hand, unarmed, mysticism, illusion, and destruction. On top of these increases, each clan has one additional stat and three additional skill bonuses. One of these in a skill or stat you don't already have, and the other three reinforcing those that all vampires receive. Burning vampires receive a 20 point boost in the agility stat and additional 20 point boosts in the sneak, unarmed, and hand-to-hand -hand skills. Onde vampires receive a 20-point boost in the short blade skill, an additional 20 points boosts in the willpower stat and the mysticism and destruction skills. Kuara vampires receive a 20-point boost in the blunt weapon skill, an additional 20-point boost in the strength stat and hand-to-hand -hand and heavy armor skills. Vampires are also immune to paralysis and common disease, 
and they have a high resistance to normal weapons, 50%. And in addition to your regular spells, which you keep, vampires acquire two additional incantations, Vampire Touch, an extremely valuable spell that drains your opponent's health while restoring your own, and a more potent, longer-lasting version of the Levitate spell. You'll grow to love your Vampire Touch spell, because it's one of the only ways you'll be gaining back health in your undead state. See, as a vampire, you don't heal while you sleep. Instead, you're awakened by a rather disturbing dream, and you'll find that your health hasn't risen at all. There are actually a number of these dreams that can appear to you when you sleep, involving everything from murdered parents to dead babies till lips being sewn shut. It's worth sleeping just to read these twisted tales. Plus, your fatigue and magicka will still replenish normally, so sleep does have its advantages. The upside of all this, you are capable of killing pretty much anybody who ever looks at you funny. If all you want to do is kill people and take their stuff, this is a phenomenal character. The downside, while you're incredibly powerful, you're also incredibly lonely. While you're a vampire, very few people will talk to you. The undead hating Danma will shun you. Some people will attack you. In fact, aside from mages guild members who have a practical interest in vampirism, the Tilvani, who just don't care but seem to have a pseudo-scientific interest, and other vampires, you will be in a world of one. You won't be able to do much of anything except kill people, and while you will be able to perform some Tilvani and mages guild quests, quests that take you outside those respective spheres may prove impossible to complete. In a nutshell, being a vampire kills much of Morrowind's gameplay, and as a vampire, you kill pretty much everything else. As a result, the game's story is effectively on hold. Whether this is a temporary or permanent state of affairs is up to you. If you are a vampire just so you can perform the vampire quests, it shouldn't be a problem. Most of the vampire quests occur within a self-contained world, with little interaction with or impact on the normal world around it. Consequently, you can do the vampire quests, take the cure, and if you haven't gone on any homicidal rampages, the world you left will not have changed when you return. But if you don't stop there and proceed to play Morrowind as a vampire, we can't be held responsible for what happens. If you go through the game killing folks indiscriminately, eventually you are going to kill someone important and break the main quest. That is, make it impossible to play through the story as it was designed to be played. This does not make it impossible to finish the game. By brute force and great skill, a very powerful character can still complete the main quest. But as outlined in the main quest chapter, this forces on you a so-called back path approach that includes a good deal of extra work and special requirements.